Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. Lord. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord every time he comes in and he spends time with us. And we just thank and praise him for his presence because we know that in the presence yes. of the Lord is the fullness of joy. So everything that you need is in the presence and it is in the hands of the Lord himself. Yes. So yes. we thank and praise Amen. God for just. The time that we've spent on the line tonight, we thank and praise yes. God. Amen. Amen. So um, tonight's word I wanted to share with everyone is, is um, a very familiar scripture, and it's about testing the soil of our hearts. So if I had to um, add a title to this, it would be called Testing the Soil of Our Hearts. And I just want you just to meditate on just that topic right there, testing the soil of our hearts. Um, tonight's Amen. meditation and, and word is coming from Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9. And I'm going to read it in your hearing real quick. Amen. Amen. And it reads, that same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he took them many things and told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other oh, seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred 60 or 30 times that was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Amen. 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 As I read this, I think about the times that we actually have the opportunity to hear the word of the Lord being spoken over our lives. Mm -hmm. And that word is whether it's being pre a preached word, the word is being preached to us every Sunday or Wednesday night whenever we have Bible study. A prophetic word given by a prophet to encourage us or to bring clarity or just even our own personal study of the word. I think about those times that we hear the word and I think about the conditions to which our, our hearts are able to receive and to believe the promises of God. In the previously read parable, Jesus compares the word of God as a seed that is thrown by a sower, and a sower is like a farmer, on various types of soils or conditions of the hearts of people when they hear the word of, when they hear the word of the Lord. And Jesus expressed the parable this way because at the time many people were familiar with the concept of sowing. And I know that there are some people on the line tonight, there, you all, there are some of you that are very familiar with sowing and farming, and you understand what it's like to plant seeds into the ground. You understand the conditions Amen. of the soil. Why is that very important to a farmer or to someone that's sowing a seed? Because even right now, um, there are a few that may, you know, you may have a garden that's growing that's you have planted and because there's a lack of rain the ground is very hard that you Amen. know it's a difficulty for that fruit or that vegetable that you planted to actually yield and to grow into some you know mature into the fruit that you want it to so i'm sure that there are many on the line tonight that are familiar with this concept yes so even as we go forth in explaining i know that yes. the explanation will not be hard for you to understand so the ground where the sower sowed the seeds and the birds came and ate it up was the hardened soil 
or shall we say the hardened heart? And I'm going to repeat that again. Just imagine a hardened heart compared to soil. Just get that visualization inside of it before your face right now, before your eyes. It hardened oh, when yes. the ground is very hard and it's dry. That's compared to a person who has a hardened heart. And just imagine a person who has shut off their heart to the Lord. This person can be anyone that you and I would meet out in public or even so and surprisingly in the house of the Lord. Yes, yes. there are people who show up every Sunday. They sit in a pew, and they never knew the Lord. They never knew the Lord, and they don't even want to know him. And we meet people like that all the time. I'm sure I'm not the the only person that has uh, run across someone, and it doesn't seem like they like they have been in church for a long time, but they really don't know who the Lord is. They've never had an experience or an encounter with him, but they are very familiar with the church sayings and and, and the cliches. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hello. Jesus, Hello. Amen. So Jesus said that says that the moment, the minute that the word is preached to this particular individual, the enemy comes and snatches that word from them. The promises of healing and restoration that that person is receiving from the minister or whoever that's delivering the word will never resonate with this individual because they have purposely shut their hearts from receiving from God. They have a hardened heart. Amen. The next soil that Jesus describes was the rocky soil. With this soil, our heart, the word, our seed that does not seem to go into the ground possibly producing some form of fruit, not completely into the ground, but possibly producing some form of fruit, but the ground or their personal foundation is so shallow that the fruit doesn't uh, stick around long enough to mature into anything. Amen. Amen. So we all know individuals and people like this. They understand all the church cliches and phrases, say they love the Lord, but a minute later, due to their faulty and unstable foundation, they have already laid down their religion. And we know a couple of people that, that will say, that would, would jam, or jump and dance and sing and do everything else in church, but they are very quick to leap to drop their religion just to get someone told or, or whatnot, or just to fulfill whatever Amen. is testing their faith. Amen. So this is the the heart of the individual that has a heart that has rocky soil, rocky soil. The the next soil, our condition, heart condition is no different. The word or seed is sown into their lives but lands among the thorns. The thorns are difficulties of life, chokes the life of the word, and there is no fruition of the word in this person's life. There was no signs of perseverance, so they allowed their worry and their anxiety, whatever problems that they have faced in life, to overtake them. And I believe last week we talked about how your problems will come and try to overtake you. And, the, you know, the Lord has given us power and authority, um, you know, through Christ Jesus to overtake our problems because we have his authority to overtake them and not allow them to overtake us. Amen. 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 So because of their problems overtaking them, they are not be able to use the seed of the promises of God. And that promise, if they were able to use the promises of the Lord, then they can overtake whatever issue is coming against them. And because of that, they will never cultivate the fruit of the spirit that God wants to manifest in their lives. They will never mature to the level that God wants to take them. Because the condition of their heart, the thorny condition of their heart did, would not allow them to actually grow in, grow up into that process. Hello, hello. Amen. Amen. So all three soils mentioned started off with good intentions. That is, the farmer had good intentions. The farmer sowed seeds on each of each of each uh, types of soil presented here. However, the conditions of the soil was badly tended to. Now we could accuse the sower or the farmer, but when it comes to the conditions of our own personal hearts, who is left in charge of managing it? My Lord, we ourselves. 
Whose job, amen. amen, whose job is it to guard our own hearts, to keep our own hearts pure? Can someone else keep our hearts pure? Can we charge our pastor, our our pastor, our apostle, our bishop, or whoever that is the leader of our ministry, of our church, to guard our hearts? No, we have to do that ourselves. We are the ones that's in charge. And how do we keep Amen. the soils of our hearts pure? Psalms 119 and 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. According to this scripture, is to know that we, we not only read the word, but to meditate and hide it in our hearts. Amen. So it's kind of like whenever you're in school or you're in college or high school and you take a course and you don't just read something just to memorize it, but if you can actually understand it, get an understanding of it, it's already inside of your head, not only in your head, but in your heart. So you have that foundation. Mm-hmm. Amen. And Amen. this is for this is for all learners. So he says, read the word, meditate on it, hide it in our hearts that we may not sin against the Lord. Um, And the word also says, who may enter into the presence of the Holy One? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. So if we want something from the Lord, we have to maintain those conditions too. Make sure our hands are clean. Make sure our hearts are pure. Make sure we're putting our hands on the right things and that we're doing the right things and we have the right intentions towards people and people and, and the responsibilities that the Lord has given us. We are all, amen, held accountable to how we steward the conditions of our hearts. If our hearts are filled with anger, resentment, fear, unforgiveness, that is because we did not take the time to compare. That is because we did not take the time to compare our heart conditions to the word of God. The word encourages us to not only be hearers, but to be doers of the word as well. This means that we have to be intentional about the upkeeping of our soil or the conditions of our heart. We are the ones who make ourselves open and available for the Holy Spirit to bear witness of the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ in our hearts. If we can become better groundskeepers, then we have the perfect condition as the fourth soil that Jesus described. This soil was the perfect soil for sowing and producing fruit. So this week as we go forward, let our prayers be that the Lord will show us areas in our hearts that are stony, that he will show us areas of our hearts that's rocky and that is thorny, that he would not only show us these things, but that he will heal those areas in our hearts so that we can be open to him and whatever plans he has for us and He wants, he want, whatever he wants to do in our lives for his glory. So, amen, that's the word for that's the word that the Lord has given me for this week and for tonight. And I pray that it was a blessing. And I pray that even as the word goes forth and it's, it's planted in your hearts as a seed, that it lands on perfect amen. ground and that, you know, the Lord will continue to send people in 